the bible speaks about conscious sin and unconscious sin in 1 corinthians and chapter 4 paul gives us his testimony saying i am conscious of nothing against myself but i am not by this acquitted for the one who examines me is the lord and so we see here paul saying that even though he is not conscious of any sin that he is committing consciously yet there's unconscious sin in him that the lord sees which he doesn't yet see so romans chapter 7 verse 14 to 25 there are two pictures here one is where i don't want to sin but i accidentally fall in a moment of weakness that's one aspect of truth that comes through that we have already considered but there is another and that is what we see in romans 7 verse 15 that which i am doing i do not understand now that's a key to this passage that's another aspect of the truth concerning freedom from sin here that even though i have sin does not have dominion over me i have victory over conscious sin yet there because my flesh as it says in romans 7:14 my flesh is sold into bondage to sin i am not sold into bondage to sin but i have a flesh that is sold into bondage to sin and because of that there are things in me that i am not even aware of unconscious sin sins of the spirit deeper things like i realized after doing something to the best of my ability oh i was seeking a little honor there from somebody i did that to impress someone lord i don't want to do it i'm not wanting to do it but i'm practicing what i don't like to do now it says here verse 16 if i do the very thing i do not wish to do i agree with the law it's good the law wants i mean god's will is that i must be perfect like christ in everything but i haven't got there yet so now then what is it that's making me do that though with my conscious mind i'm really seeking to serve god there's a sin that indwells me in my flesh that's making me unconsciously do certain things that are unchrist like so how shall we be free from this in my flesh verse 18 that dwells nothing good it's my flesh is never going to change the wishing is present with me my wishing is that i become like christ totally in every area but in actual practice i find i'm not behaving like christ or doing what christ would do in different situations of life or thinking like christ would think or having the same attitude to money and women and other people and things exactly like christ i want it but the good that i wish i want to be like that i find in different situations i'm not like that and as i progress in the christian life as i grow in the christian life the holy spirit gives me light on different areas of my life which at one time i didn't understand like we said in verse 15 that which i'm doing and do not understand we can look at our life something like this like a cube of ice in a glass of orange juice 90% of it is under the surface of that orange juice and you can't see it and 10% is above so our conscious life is like that 10% above which we can see and there romans 6:14 applies we can get victory if we are faithful we can overcome sin in all our conscious area but still there's a 90% of our life which is unconscious where we just don't have light and we are doing a whole lot of unchrist like things this is what john expresses in 1 john see john says two things in 1 john chapter 3 and verse 9 he says no one who is born of god practices sin he does not continue to commit sin because he's freed from it if he comes to a life of victory he does not commit conscious sin continuously he may have the occasional fall but that's different from continuously committing sin that's also what we looked at in romans 7 but 
John says another thing in 1 John 1 8 if we say that we have no sin now having sin is different from committing sin committing sin is a conscious thing some area we are aware of but having sin is areas of unchrist likeness in our life which we are not even aware we have it see if you think of that cube of ice that I mentioned if you could neatly slice off that top 10%, that would be like having victory over conscious sin. What would happen? A little bit of that underneath 90% would come up and you would get light on it. So that's how it is. As we walk with the Lord, God gives us light on things in our life which we didn't have light on earlier. Maybe you're too talkative. Maybe you're not talking evil things, but maybe you dominate a conversation so that you don't give other people time to talk. And you're always talking spiritual things, but dominating the conversation. And you don't see that that is unchristlike. And one day you suddenly get light on it and say, Hey, I dominate the conversation so much when I'm sitting with other people. And I didn't have light on it till now. Lord, thank you. A little bit of that ice cube has come up. And as you deal with that, by the power of the Holy Spirit, God gives you a little more light on what is underneath. That is Christian progress and that ice cube becomes less and less and less and less as we grow spiritually. So, he says here in Romans chapter 7, verse 21, I find then this principle, that evil is present in me, the one who wishes to do good. Where is that evil? It's in my flesh. It's not in my will. My will is set on God's side. My mind is set on God's side, but my flesh has got a lot of unchristlike attitudes in it. I joyfully concur with the law of God in the inner man. This new covenant law is that I might become like Christ completely. I agree with it a hundred percent, but I see a different law in the members of my body waging war against the law of my mind. Here is my mind true wholehearted disciple of Jesus. His passion is to be like Christ, to speak like Christ, to behave like Christ. He agrees with the law of God completely. This is the way God wants man to live. Jesus came and lived on earth to show us how God wants man to live. And I agree with it completely. But, it, despite my passionate desire and despite God giving me the ability also within, it's only very slowly that I get light on the unchristlikeness -like in different areas of my life. The more wholehearted I am, the sooner I will discover those things. If you are not wholehearted, you will never discover those things. But God's will is that we progress and discover. I see this different law in the members of my body waging war against the law of my mind and making me a prisoner of the law of sin which is in my members. Now, he, let me repeat again. He's not speaking about continuously lusting after women and continuously telling lies, continuously losing the temper. No, he's finished with that in Romans 6. He's talking here, one, as I said earlier, about the accidental fall, when you don't want to sin at all. And secondly, about unconscious sin. Both we could see in this passage in Romans 7. So, when he sees that in himself, he feels terrible. And he thinks of himself saying, Oh, wretched man that I am, who will set me free from the body of this death? See, selfishness and pride, particularly, are two sins that are very deeply rooted in us. And they're like two huge onions. And I, we looked at the illustration of the ice cube. We could look at the illustration of an onion. An onion has got many layers. And you do something and afterwards you discover that there was selfishness in that. And you repent of it. And you peel off one layer of that selfishness and you got a little light of selfishness in that area. But you haven't finished with it. Because in some other situation as you work with the Lord, you get more light, another layer of selfishness which you peel off and little by little that onion gets thin. In the same way with pride. You may do something sincerely, wholeheartedly, want to live it for, for, do it for the glory of God. And at the end of it, you may find a little secret spiritual pride comes up. Or a little seeking the honor of men or seeking to impress men. But you don't see it at the time when you're doing that work, when you're serving the Lord in some way. But afterwards you see it. You say, oh wretched man that I am. Who will deliver me from this body of death? Jesus Christ will do it. But it's progressive. 
you don't get delivered in a moment. Thanks be to God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then on the one hand, I myself with my mind, no doubt what I'm doing. I want to serve the law of God completely. But on the other, my flesh, till the end of my life, it will serve the law of sin. <clears throat> it will keep on doing unchristlike things in areas where I don't have light. It's unconscious. And because it's unconscious, I'm not living in conscious sin. Romans 8.1, there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Because we don't walk according to the flesh. But we walk according to the Spirit. But even the one who walks according to the Spirit, he's not perfectly like Christ. He's progressively getting more and more and more and more like Christ. This is a wonderful life. So there is no condemnation. And if we understand Romans 7, 14 to 25, all right, we will not condemn ourselves for that occasional trip up when we fell, when we didn't want to, or because of unconscious sin that we discover progressively. But we press on to become more and more like Jesus Christ. Amen.